exciting match we just saw, but we've got two Americans kicking it off for that crown of Pokemon World Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Hayden McHavish! And his opponent, Ben Hickey! Now we'll see whether or not McTavish can pull it in, or this is Hickey's game. Trainers, there's a lot riding on this one. You may begin. Priscilla, Roto, Heatran, and Thunderous Incarnate. So, pretty interesting teams here. Yeah, they are interesting teams. And they're kind of interesting players, too. I mean, one player coming through the last chance qualifier, who's someone you don't usually expect to make to the finals, and then um, the other player didn't manage to cut nationals this year, even though we won a regional. So, both kind of dark horses, and I think that's been the trend of the seniors division for the most part. Last year, Tolan Webb was kind of an underdog, but he was the champion, even though he probably shouldn't have been an underdog. Just the blinking red. The 
Cyprus is going to be able to get its earthquake off this time, thanks to Wideguard not being used by Machamp. Uh, it is going to be able to break that substitute and maybe get the KO on Machamp. It will be very close, uh, thanks to the reduced damage from spread moves there. You see Heatran's substitute faded. It's better to have the substitute fade than to take that earthquake in the face. And Machamp does survive with 13 HP. It's the dynamic punch off on the Hydreigon. Uh, one of the cool things about Machamp is it cannot miss. Because it only has 50% accuracy, but uh, the special ability of Machamp is no guard, which means it never misses and nothing ever misses hit. So it can use it can accurate moves like that when it makes them accurate. Uh, really good turn for Machamp there. No I'm not a big fan of Hydreigon using the item life mode because it gives you more sustained defensive pressure and you can do more damage with moves other than Draco Meteor. But by not having the Dragon Gem, Hydreigon was unable to pick up that knockout of Machamp, which was really big there because then it was able to take another hit and knock Hydreigon out back. Yeah, and now Priscilla coming up, coming up for, uh, for Ben there. That's, uh, you know, Priscilla does well against Machamp, but it's not going to be able to do much damage I against Heatran here, who is by far wow, the most threat wow. on the field. Yeah, Heatran is definitely the threat here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see an attempt at Trick Room here, but the difficulty with doing that is the other property of Dynamic Punch, and the reason why it's only 50% accurate normally, is that it always inflicts confusion. Uh, we've seen a lot of trainers uh, struggling this weekend with trying to get attacks through confusion, and Machamp may be adding to the fun here. Yeah, Machamp does go for the wide guard again, going to protect with that Heatran from any incoming earthquakes. Uh, possibly to go ahead and set up for the free substitute on Heatran, just in case the Trick Room does come in. The substitute is uh, put in place by Heatran. We're going to be able to take another hit from that Metagross if it needs to. The Earthquake does come out into the wide guard again. Machamp just making sure that that Metagross can't do much of anything this turn, uh, this game, as the wide guard protects both of them. And the Trick Room does come out from Cresselia, going to make sure that the slower Pokemon are going first for this uh, next five turns. It's sort of an interesting choice there. Uh, Metagross does like being a slow hero. Uh, I was sort of surprised that it wasn't an attempt to stop the Trick Room, but I guess it's another way to get the same goal. Uh, yeah, we're letting Heatran attack outside of Trick Room before Metagross would let it go first, and having a substitute up does the same thing. So perhaps he'd just rather fight the Trick Room here. He kind of had his choice, at least if he wanted to take the point flip with the confusion. So it'll be interesting to see what his plan is here and what he's brought that might prefer the you know, inside Trick Room, including Machamp. Like you mentioned, that confusion status is another way to afflict that on the opponent. Cresselia now confused will have to be able to fight through its confusion to make its own attack. But it's not, it's going to hit itself instead. As we've seen before, just those extra turns can be what makes the difference here. The Earthquake is going to be able to finally KO that Machamp, but it did what it needed to do. It got the confusion onto that Cresselia, and it is the substitute for Heatran is going to allow it to probably KO that Metagross should its heat wave dead. As we see, Heatran substitute is fading now, and Machamp does take the last little bit of damage needed to not get out. Bates goes back to his trainer as Heatwave does hit both Pokemon, and we will see that Metagross going down, as well as Priscilla taking quite a bit of damage there. Usually we see very bulky, but a critical death. There's not too much bulk you can train your Pokemon to stop critical hits at this point, so... So Priscilla is going to heal up here, yeah, the Citrus Berry is going to make sure that Cresselia stays uh, healthy for this turn and does, does still have Trick Room up, which is important, uh, especially if it decides to bring like, the Rhyperior out, which will instantly threaten that Heatran. We see Hayden deciding to go with the Scizor. Uh, Scizor is going to be able to pressure Cresselia immediately, and we do see the Rhyperior coming out. A uh, good move there by Ben to get that Rhyperior out, which will also threaten the Scizor. Even though it's a steel type, uh, and the bug type does make sure that the ground is neutral to it, Scissor is still a very fragile Pokemon. Yeah, Rhyperior is really putting out the pressure here. Uh, we saw that the Masters of the United States Nationals, but other than that, Rhyperior is another one of those Pokemon we don't see a whole lot of. Uh, not quite as obscure as Machamp, but it's up there. Uh, it's going to have to help out the combat here. Uh, Cresselia is not going to be able to do much to either of these Pokemon, and there's only two Pokemon left, so if anyone's going to get this done, it's going to have to be Rhyperior here. And there's three Pokemon on the other side, it's going to have to find a way to deal with. Yeah, especially if it's packing some items like a ground gym, as we've seen before. Uh, that ground gym boosted earthquake, you know, we talked about this in the juniors finals, how uh, the junior finals, how uh, the Politoed needed to be able to KO three Pokemon in two turns. Couldn't do that without a spread move. Right here you're against a lot of powerful spread moves. Like that earthquake. As right, right here you're Cresselia's Levitate does make sure that it is not taking any damage from its partner. And the Ground Gym activates, strengthening that Earthquake's power, boosting the damage output of that right here immensely. It is going to get the Sugar Berry out of Heatran, but thanks to that Ground Gym, not going to matter all that much. It is going to make sure that 
Heatran does faint. And Scizor's hit points are dropping dramatically too, but does manage to hang on with that 50 HP. And the steel typing is going to be pretty scary against that right here from Scizor. Cresselia is still confused. Is it going to be able to make an attack again? Does get hurt itself in its own confusion. And Scizor uses Bug Bite, is going to go ahead and take out that Cresselia, opting that to take out the Cresselia instead of that right here. But she had help again from beyond the grave there. And the confusion is a big deal. Because uh, I like would have done a whole lot of damage there, but like, chip damage is always important, especially if it, say, you use ice beam and a chance to freeze there. But basically, you can see what the last Pokemon on Scissor's side is there, because uh, Scissor will be able to do decent damage with Ball Punch. It's only going to be able to attack once, but. Uh, this Rotom is going to be a little bit. Uh...
should have all the information he needs to be in a better position this time. And maybe approach the beginning of this game a little bit differently. Uh, my period was big enough, so yeah. He just needs to find a way to get my period enough health that he can actually finish the game out this time. All right, and here we go into game two of this best of three set. Ben on the top, Ben Hickey on the top of your screen with High Dragon and with Cresselia. This could be his final game.
so slow. Not the best position for Ryan Perry, to be honest. I think that might pan out. Yeah, a rough spot for him. Big up pressure from him for a little while out here. But uh, like you mentioned before, I would have expected the trigger for Ryan Perry. I'm a little surprised that we didn't see it before. And Ryan Perry's going to have a rough go of it now. He's going to deal with a faster of a champ. And the you know, Thunderous is here for the least most problems we would have called. And no, I can't imagine what you make a deal with. Now, one thing that's great about having Thunderous out right now is that the advantage of Ryan Perry is that, well, like we saw a stable here in Cal and some other games where they're like the slow physical single target.
He just came and he knew that he could conquer. He got through the LCQ, all five or six rounds of that, and then the six rounds of Swiss, and then the top cut matches, all best of three sets, and 